got the sound in Jesus' name. Eyes made all hard to wake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. everyone. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, if we haven't had the chance to meet yet this morning, my name is Sharice Green, and we are so excited that you are here. If you are a guest, thank you for deciding to make City Walk part of your weekend. We know there's a lot of things that you could do. Uh, you will hear us talk a lot at City Walk about getting connected and finding a community to plug into and be a part of and be known. And we think that is so important for everyone, regardless of what you believe. The easiest way to get connected with City Walk or start that connection is just by filling out one of these connect cards. They're in the seats in front of you. Uh, there's just a couple of questions on the back. If you would just take a minute throughout the service at some point today, we have a gift of you. We have $5. You choose Starbucks or Dutch Bros. But also for every single one of these, uh, we donate $5 to a local organization in town called A Woman's Friend. So we'd love for you to fill one of these out and take it to the next steps table. Another really easy way for you to stay connected at City Walk is just by downloading the app. It's a free download. If you search for City Walk Church in your app store, you'll find it. There's a lot of really cool tools in there. You can track sermon notes, there's a free Bible, but there's also a place for announcements so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on. And one of the announcements that you'll find in there is uh, what we call the table. It's our women's ministry. And we are meeting tomorrow. It's the first Monday of every single month. And we would love for you to make plans to be there. If you are a woman from 17 to 117, this is a gathering for you to get connected and grow deeper and just make some really great connections. So we're gonna go ahead and stand and continue worshiping this morning. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar Hallelujah, I watch the darkness flee, 
glory Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, what a say Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for who you are. We can't thank you enough just for your, your, your grace and your love, your mercy. God, we thank you that we can come to you and that you give us forgiveness. God, we thank you just for your nature, your, how you're our Father, God, how you are our Lord, our Savior, our protector. God, we thank you so much for those things. And uh, God, in the times and trials of our lives, May we come to you before any other. Just rely on you, knowing that we can come to, to you. God, we thank you so much for who you are, for what you've done. It's in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Now, home is a lot of work. Just plain work. When work at home is planned and organized for cooperation, there can usually be more time for leisure. I'm certainly in favor of those things. Leisure, fun. Who is it? Wouldn't we all be happier if we worked out a little system for living together in harmony? But how can we manage them? We'll have to work out the full answer together. Say, Mom, it's well.
family problems can be solved through frank and friendly discussion, which points the way to a happy family life. You know, this is beginning to be quite a family project. It certainly is. Well, good morning, City Walk Church. Man, it's great to see you all. I think I've had the opportunity to meet everybody in here, but just in case uh, this is your first time here or uh, you're joining us online for the first time, my name is Josh. I have the privilege of serving here at City Walk as the next generation pastor. And if you don't know what that is, basically it just means I hang out with the kids in the youth group, uh, the kids in the City Kids Ministry and the youth group all the time. So I got a pretty sweet gig here at church, but I'm excited to be with you uh, at the end of this series. So Chris has been doing a series called Winning at Home, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to kind of go through every single message yet or you haven't been here, you missed a week, I would especially encourage you to listen to last week's message on communication. Uh, communication messages are kind of like prayer messages to me. I can never hear it enough. I always think to myself, well, i got to communicate better, no matter if I've heard uh, 100 communication messages or 100 prayer messages. I'm always like, oh, i got to pray more. i got to talk more. i got to do all those things. So I'd encourage you uh, to listen to those messages. Well, we're wrapping the series up today, and today I am humbled and excited to be able to talk to you a little bit uh, about this. And uh, the, today's message is about stewarding moments, stewarding moments. And we decided to end the message, uh, to end the series this way because I think if we're going to win at home, we have to understand that there are times in our life, there are times in every single day that are important. And as you want to win at home, as you want to make the most of the time that you have, you have to realize what moments those are. And so today's message is called Stewarding Moments. I know I'm not the only one out there who has a pull on their time, has a pull on time. You have a job, obviously families, kids, parents. Maybe you're trying to go to the gym as much as you can. Obviously, the new binge-worthy Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu or whatever it is, everything has got a pull on our time. And especially thanks to Steve Jobs, we have these little cool things in our pockets that are just sucking the time out of our day. So we all have this pull, this tension of our time. And the struggle for most of us, if you're like me, is to know when or how to use the time of the day from day to day, from year to year, and even from relationship to relationship. How do I use the time? And maybe you've seen that there's probably hundreds, if not thousands of books on the New York Times bestseller list that talk about how to use your time. In fact, if you go through social media, you're scrolling through social media, you're going to find a video or two on how to like flatten your belly in five minutes while eating a double-double, right? It's, it's like they're going to try and save you more time. They're going to tell you, hey, the five-minute work week, only check your email for like 30 seconds and you'll, you know, boost your productivity. Everything is about saving time. But as we're going to read in the Bible here today in a minute, that God never asks you to save time. When we think about winning at home, God never says save time. He says, make the most of it. Because we only have a certain amount. We only have a certain amount. Every single one of us has a, a, a clock that's ticking. Now, we don't have that clock. We don't know when it is. But all of us have a certain amount, so we can't save it. We have to make the most of it. But if we're honest, most of us are pretty overloaded in life. Most of us are pretty overloaded in life. I'm probably similar to you, right? I, I have four kids. They all go to school. They all have homework. They all have sports that we're going to. So where do we spend our time? We want to make time for our quiet time. We want to come to church every Sunday. We got to get a small group every week. How do we make the most of our time and stewarding those moments? I believe it's a God thing. Obviously, I'm here at church. I'm preaching. So yeah, you'd probably like, spoiler alert. Yeah, it's a God thing, right? This was an illustration in my life, no, never more illustrated in my life than um, when I was actually 27 years old. So it was last year. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, so it was, I was 27 years old, and uh, actually, a, a little bit about my life before that. So um, when I was four years old, my parents got divorced, uh, and uh, I was living in Florida at the time, and my dad stayed where we lived, and my mom, and my sister, and I, we moved away. And, uh, and so when, we got, when my parents got divorced, uh, I didn't really talk to my dad a lot. He, uh, uh, he kind of made some bad choices, and for probably the, the next six, seven years, I probably maybe only talked to him three times. 
So I, I really didn't know who he was. I didn't know him that well. So when that six, seven years passed, we, uh, we came back together and, uh, well, he didn't, we, we didn't, the family didn't come back together, but he kind of may have had the error of his ways and he started calling me. So when I was in middle school, my dad started calling me every single week. I mean, it was like clockwork. Every single week he started calling me. So it was middle school and then all the way through high school. And if I was honest with you, I, I didn't really, every time he called, I didn't really want to talk, right? In middle school, we didn't have like caller ID. And so I didn't know who was calling, and so I'd pick it up, and then if it was him, I'd talk to him. But this cool invention came out when I was in high school, and I was like, oh, cool, I can actually ignore people now, right? And so we had caller ID. And so I, when, I, when, I, when he started calling, I just decided to myself, you know what, I, I don't know if I'm going to answer the phone. And when my mom would pick up, I'd say, hey, mom, like, I'm not really interested in talking right now. I just tell him I'm not here. And I just over and over and over again would just say, you know what, I talked to him every now and then. I didn't feel like I was mad at him. I just... Wasn't a phone guy, and I didn't really like it. Well, fast forward to when I'm 27. I've got two jobs. I've got two kids. I'm trying to finish my degree at this time. And my dad is like clockwork, calling and calling. And now I want to pick up, but I can't. I have so much going on that he calls, and I, I, I actually want to talk to him, but I can't because I know now that it, it was important for me to pick up the phone then, but I didn't, and now that I know it's important, I don't have the time to pick up the phone. And there was this one specific instance, this was Saturday night, and, um, and my second job was I worked evenings at, uh, at Chick-fil-A. Hallelujah, I worked, I, I had, the, uh, had the kitchen, I worked the, the kitchen, I was the manager there, and I was there, and it was, it was the dinner rush. We were busy. If you've ever been in the kitchen during dinner, it's nuts, even at home. Uh, it's crazy, and it's busy. And uh, I'm, I'm working, and, and my phone rings. So I pull it out, and I see it's my dad, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I just don't have time. Click the ignore button, put it back in my pocket. And like five minutes later, in my, in my heart and in my mind, I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, I just, something's not right. And, and I just felt this feeling, this uneasy feeling of, you know what, call him back. And I'm like, oh, I'll call him back tomorrow. Or I'll call him back. Maybe he'll be up when I get out of work, or I'll call him back. And it's like, no, 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 call him back. So I went to my boss, and I, he, was, he was running the place at that, that time. And I was like, hey, man, I don't normally do this, but would you just let me take a few minutes? My dad called. Just want to make sure everything's good. And so he said, uh, yeah, sure, I'll take your spot. Go take a break. Went back to the back, took 15 minutes, called my dad, and I was like, hey, Pop, what's up? Like, is, there any, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's great. Just wanted to say hi. Cool. How you doing? So uh, we, we talked for like six, seven minutes, and I said, hey, I'll, I'll call you later sometime this week, and uh, we'll catch up. Okay, cool. Love you. Love you. See you later. So the night went normal. The next morning got up. It was Sunday. Chick-fil-A's closed. Hallelujah. Went to church. Went to church. Got back from church, I got a phone call. I got a phone call from my uncle, and he said that my dad had had a massive heart attack driving and, and, and died. And you're probably thinking, Josh, that's pretty heavy-handed. But can I just be honest with you? It was pretty rough, you could imagine. But there has not been a day that I don't think about, what if I didn't call him back? What if I didn't take that moment and just, I'm going to call him back? And that is maybe a little heavy-handed, but I think that's what's at stake. I think that when we think about our time together, when we think about our families, that's what's at stake. So I truly believe that God prompts us in our life, and when he does, he wants us to steward this moment. Don't let it pass you by. And he gives this these these things in our heart, these, 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 these things in our stomach that, that make us go, ah, just something's not right. And every day, there is a moment with your spouse, with your kids, with your family, with a coworker, with a teammate that God says, hey, don't rush through this. Don't rush through this. Steward this moment. Stay there. Don't rush through this. So when it comes to stewarding moments, I mentioned that in the Bible, it doesn't talk about saving time. So what does it talk about? What does God say 
about our time. So if you have, your, if you have a copy of the scripture, you can open it up. It's Ephesians chapter 5. We're, that's where we're going to be today. Ephesians chapter 5, verses uh, 15, 16, and 17. If you don't have a copy, that's okay. We have it on the screens. But before we jump into that, I wanted to kind of just let you know about a little bit about Ephesians. So Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul. Uh, it's a great book. It's one of my favorites. In fact, it's, it's one of those books that's super easy to read. If you, if you, it's only six chapters long. So if you haven't jumped into it recently, I would encourage you to do that. The first three chapters of Ephesians is all about the grace of God, this mystery that Paul is trying to explain to people about this new grace, this grace that people, that people can have. It unpacks the humanity and the mysteries of grace to us through Jesus. The last three chapters, verses 4, 5, and 6, begin to tell us what this grace means to us. So you have this grace, so what does it mean to the church? What does it mean to the individual? What does it mean to the family? And as we get into chapter 5, we see that Paul is telling us, hey, listen, abandon your old life and live in a new way. So in the first six verses, we're going to be starting in verse 15, but just in the first six verses, Paul tells us, walk in love. That's the new way. Verses 7 through 14 tells us to walk in light. And as we start in verse 15, you're going to see that we need to walk in wisdom. So we're going to start in verse 15. It should be on the screen for you there. It says this, pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Can I pray with you real quick? Heavenly Father, as we dive into your word, I I just want to pray that you would give us an ear to understand. Lord, as, as as a human being, as a man standing here, I have no power to individually talk to each one of these people, so I pray that you do that, and I pray that your voice would be louder than mine, and I pray that as you prompt us, that you would prompt us and we would obey. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So what's the first thing he tells us to do? He says, be precise with your time. Be precise with your time. If you look at it, it says, pay careful attention to how you walk. Now, if someone were to tell you, hey, hey, pay attention, you would think to yourself, oh, right? In class or something like that, your teacher or your coach or as a parent, you tell it to your kids all the time, hey, hey, pay attention, I'm talking to you. What you're meaning is, is when you say pay attention, you're thinking to yourself, okay, something that's coming after this is important. Something that's coming after this when it says pay attention is important. But I think Paul does something interesting. If you look at it, it says pay careful attention. It's not just pay attention. It says careful. And that word careful actually means precise, to be precise. So when you think about being precise, the idea is, is that it's like a doctor who's, who's got a scalpel and making a very precise incision. It's like a, an artist who's got this beautiful painting or portrait, and they're, they're looking at it, and they're thinking, okay, if I just make this one brush stroke, it can change the whole portrait. It's very precise, very intentional. So when Paul says to pay careful attention, or to careful attention, He says, be intentional, be precise with what's coming, which is the time, which means see the little moments as important, the little moments as important. Who doesn't love going on vacation and going to Disneyland or Disney World or or going to see something amazing, right? Those are, all those times are incredible and those are important, but what Paul is saying here is you, there's a precise amount of time in every day that you need to pay attention to. Be precise. The 15, see the 15 minutes as, a value, as valuable because the precise amount of time has the potential to alter your entire day. How that plays out in my life? Like I said, I have four kids. Taking them to school takes me about 10 minutes. But I'll just tell you, that 10 minutes has ruined my kids' day at times. I know I'm not the only one, Right? You, you had to yell at them to get ready for school. You're like, get your lunch. And they, they forgot that. And every, it's a mess. And so you're lecturing them all the way to school. And then you're like, okay, make your choices. Right? 
And he's like, no, no, like, like that 10 minutes, and, I, and the Lord is convicting me of this, that 10 minutes can alter their day. Imagine if I just talked to them about what it looks like to be a good friend or just prayed with them before they got out of the car. That 10 minutes is valuable, and that 10 minutes has the potential to impact the next six hours. So why wouldn't we use that? Be precise with your time. The second thing he says is be wise with your time. Be wise with your time. And he says, pay attention to how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. See, when in the scripture, when you see that word walk, a lot of times it's translated as live. So when we, we say, when he says walk in light, walk in love, walk in wisdom, he's not talking about like don't stub your toe in the dark kind of walk. He's talking about live in love. Live your life this way. Live in light. Live in wisdom. So when he says pay attention to how you walk, it's pay attention to how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. This idea of wisdom has baffled me for most of my adult life. I have just been like, I love this idea of wisdom and getting wisdom and, and more wisdom. I just, I read as much as I can about it. I want to hear different perspectives about it because I just want to know what wisdom looks like. We can't just flippantly go through the New York Times bestseller list and think that this is what wisdom looks like. I'm not saying it's not there on certain things, but when, we come, when it comes to winning at home, Friends, we don't need a self-help book. We need the power of God. And when we think of winning at home, it's not just flippant, it's intentional. So I believe that wisdom comes in three ways, three things. Wisdom comes in three things. The first thing that wisdom has, the first thing that you, how you're going to get wisdom is, is from God. Spoiler alert, right? It's from God. James chapter 1, verse 5. We went through James this summer, we, uh, and, and it was an incredible book. But James chapter 1, verse 5 says, Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask of God, who gives generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. Friends, I, 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 like I said, I have been baffled by this idea of wisdom. And sometimes I go to everywhere else but just praying. And I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I think it just needs to be said. If any of you lack wisdom, and if I was honest, that's me. That's me. All the time in my day, I lack wisdom. It's not like a, I lack wisdom, you know, Monday of this week. No, no, no. It's probably seven days a week. I'm like, I don't know what to do here. I don't know how to live this out. I don't know what to do in this situation. And James says, ask Ask God, and he'll give it to you. The first way we get wisdom, and I, I would say that this should be really the only way we look, God. But some of us, we pray, and we just need to talk, we need to, talk to somebody. We pray, and we need to talk to somebody, and that's not a bad thing. So I said three things. The first one was God. The second one, find somebody who has some time. Find somebody who has... Now, I'm not talking about time in their schedule. I'm talking about they're older. I believe that wisdom comes with time. I know it's super simple, but if I have a problem in my life, I'm not probably going to, I'm not going to go to my eight-year-old daughter, Olivia. She'd probably color me a picture. Tell me she loves me. That's great. Doesn't help my situation. Find somebody who's older than you. Find somebody who's done it. Find somebody who, who when, when, when you think of, can give you wisdom, can teach you how to live. And they're worth emulating. The third thing is experience. Go to someone with the experience in whatever situation you need wisdom in. Not just, be, uh, listen, not just someone who has experience, but someone who has experience and has changed how they have their experience. If you go to somebody who just keeps doing the wrong thing, Every time you're like, hey, how do you do that? Now, you want to find somebody who's actually going to help you and give you wisdom because they've learned from their mistakes. No perfect people out there, right? That's okay. No one is perfect. But I'm looking for somebody who's been in my situation, maybe made a mistake, and learned from it. Some of the sweetest words I've ever heard in a discipleship relationship with a mentor of mine, when I'm talking about my family, says, that's normal. 
Have you ever been with your family and think, they're crazy? I don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, my, I, 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 I th- we were talking about it, and I don't remember with who, uh, some parents. And it's like, if my kids would listen to me the first eight times I'd say it, I wouldn't have to yell, right? But they, when, I, when I yell, they listen. And, and the mentor was like, yeah, that's pretty normal. And that's so, it's just good to hear, right? It's just wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, we all went through that. Or when you're with your kids and, and they're just going through a hard time and you need to get somebody who's gone through that hard time with their kids and they're like, yeah, 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 just, just stick with it, man. Just stick with it. Be consistent. That's wisdom. That's what we need. When it comes to winning at home, friends, most of us are still in the thick of how to have good relationships, whether it's with family, whether it's with friends, whether it's with extended family. We are having a trouble with this one situation. Ask somebody. Pray about it. Walk not as unwise people, but as wise. So the third thing, the third thing he says, make the most of your time. You make the most of your time. I think that this is interesting because here's where it gets into the, the idea that you've heard, you've heard this, you guys have all heard saying time is money. You have heard that before? You gotta tell, you, you tell people, hey, hurry up, time is money. Maybe you said it too. It's not true. Time is infinitely more valuable than money. With times, there's no savings account. There's no making more if you lose some. There's no... There's, there, 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 there's no withdrawal and, and saving for a rainy day. Paul doesn't tell us to save time because we can't. He says, make the most of it. And in fact, if you have your Bible, some of your translations may use the word redeem. Redeem the time. That word redeem means to buy back. To buy back. And it, if, you, if you look at that, if you want to know how important God sees the value of your time, He only uses that word in two ways in the scripture. That word redeem, he uses it with our soul. Jesus came, left heaven, came to this earth to redeem us, to buy us back so we could have a right relationship with God. The second time he uses it is right here. Redeem your time. Buy it back. Don't use it flippantly. It's important. Redeem the time. Make the most of it. When you only have 30 minutes with your spouse because the day is crazy, make the most of it. Make it the most, make it the most important 30 minutes you'll ever have in that day. Talk to each other. Spend quality time. Put the electronics away. One of my philosophies is, because is, is, we are busy, and I know you guys are too, is the two moments in the day that I, I fight for with my family is dinner time and bedtime. And that was just wisdom somebody gave to me when I was a young dad. Dinner time and bedtime. I fight for those moments because those moments are important. So most days I'm home and I want to put my kids to bed because no matter how much I want to rush, I, I go to shut the door 18 times. Daddy, daddy, one more thing. It's just the time they want to talk. They probably got me wrapped around their finger, by the way, just so you know. If you ask Julie, she's, I spend way too much time in there. And dinner time. Don't rush through those moments. Don't rush through those moments because those are the moments that are redeeming, that you're going to talk to your kids, talk to your wife, talk to your husband, talk to the other family that may be there with you. Don't rush through those times. Put the phones away, even at a restaurant. It's been, a, it's been just a rule that we've had with our family. When we're out, we just, the phones aren't on the table face down. They're in our pocket. If we're at home, they're in the other room because we want to just 20 minutes. Make the most of the time. Maybe out there, you're out there and you're like, hey, Josh, listen, I don't have a wife and kids. So you, maybe you have some extra time that some of us don't. I'm not saying you're not busy, you got school maybe, you got jobs, other relationships. How are you using your extra time? God says to make the most of this time. Maybe you have the time to serve more than somebody else because right now they're just focused on family. 
Maybe you have the time to go do something, to go serve your community, to go be Jesus somewhere because you have a little bit of extra time. I'm not saying don't relax. I'm not saying don't binge every now and then. But if God wants us to make the most of our time, maybe some of you out there, you're single and go be missionary for a year. Make the most of that time. Learn something new. Go, go learn a language. Go travel a little bit. Make the most of the time. Because when you do have a wife or a husband and you do have kids or, or you, you do have a family that's living with you, you're not going to have that time back. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. Use your time. That's redeeming. And if I was honest, if the best way we could use our time is obviously in our time with God. How do we use our time and make the most of it? If you're waiting in line, open up your Bible app instead of your Instagram. Just read, for, just read a chapter. Sitting at the DMV. Waiting in a long line. 15 minute break at work. How to make the most of that time could be that you just want to invest in your relationship with God. And I know it's like, it, it, for, and I'm, I'm just being real with you all, it, it's hard for me because I struggle, even as somebody who serves God full time. I don't know why it's easier to watch Netflix than it is to read my Bible some days. I can't tell you why. I'm a human being. However, the fighting for that time, the redemption of that time means that I have to make some hard choices. I have to make the better choice. And, 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 and Paul says, why are we making these choices? Well, if you look at it, it says, because the days are evil. The days are evil. There is a active, an active living evil out there. He says, I want you to be wise. Make the most of the time because there is a force out there that is going against what you're trying to do. It wants you to waste the time that God gives you. So when you think about, I think sometimes we, we forget and I just want, there's a verse, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And it, it's a helpful verse. It sobers me a little bit when I think about this thing. It says, be sober-minded and be alert. For your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. This evil is not looking to make your relationship hard with your kids. He's looking to destroy your relationship. He's not looking for you. He's not looking to, to, to make it, uh, the communication hard with your spouse. He's looking to destroy that relationship. Friends, don't make any doubt about it. There is an evil out there that wants to see what, you, what God wants as good to destroy it. He wants to devour your relationships. The second thing he wants to do is he wants to distract your relationships. I read this, I read this quote once and it says, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. If the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. We have to combat this evil with not allowing the busyness in our life to sway us from the things that God tells us are important. And the things that God tells us are important is the people who are, he put in our life. A mentor of mine told me, he said, listen, Josh, I know that you're a pastor. And, and one of the things in the Bible, it tells us to make disciples. And he said, the most, the, the, the most productive disciples maybe you'll ever make are the ones that are living in your house right now. Somebody told me once also that, you know, a plumber usually has leaky pipes at the house. Construction workers usually have an empty, you know, a room that's unfinished or a project unfinished because whatever they do it out there, they don't want to do at home. And sometimes we get so caught up serving or maybe we get so caught up that we forget the family, that we forget our home. And there is an attack on our home. And if the devil can't take you and make you bad, he'll make you busy. He'll distract you. He'll just tell you to turn on your phone. Ignore him. We can't do that. We have to fight for that. 
have to fight for it. In fact, there's a, there's a, a really good illustration in the scripture. And you probably, you probably know this. If you've been in church for any amount of time, it's the story of Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus is going to a, a friend's house. And, uh, and as he goes, there's a bunch of people that came. And Mary and Martha were, were getting ready. And, and, and Martha wanted to make sure that everything went well. Right? She wants to be a good hostess. So she's cleaning and probably cooking and doing all the things to make sure everybody's comfortable and, and doing the things that you would think a good hostess would do. Well, after, it doesn't say at the amount of time, but after a certain amount of time, Martha's looking over at Mary because Mary just sat down and spent time with Jesus. And as she spent time with Jesus, she's just sitting there watching and, and listening. And, and Martha's just looking at her going, what are you doing? She's thinking to herself, why am I doing all this work by myself? And so she finally comes out, and this is what she says. She'll be on the screen there. It says, she talks to Jesus. She says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. <laughs> the Lord answered her and said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice. And it will not be taken away from her. In certain times in our life, I believe that there is a right choice to make. Was Martha doing anything wrong? No. She was making sure that people were comfortable. She was making sure that there was food to eat and the place was clean and people were, you know, just having a good time. But her sister was just sitting there with Jesus, and she looked at her and thought, no, 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 that's not what she should be doing. She should be doing what I'm doing. And if we're going to win at home, friends, it's going to take the power of God in our life. Like I told you, this book is not a self-help book. There's a professor called Howard Hendricks. He says, he's passed away, but he was a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary, and he said, this book is not here to satisfy your curiosity. It's here to change your life. If we, have, if we need wisdom, friends, ask for it. Because I believe that in every situation, there's moments in the day where there's a right choice to make and there's a wrong choice to make. And if we're going to make the most of our time, we need help with that choice. I mentioned it at the beginning of my message. Maybe some of you here are here for the first time. I don't know where everybody's relationship with God is in this moment. I don't know where your journey is. But if I could just tell you, to make the most of a moment, it's now. We believe that God is intentional. We believe that God has a plan for every human being. We believe that God of the Bible has created you, and he's created you for a moment just like this. And if you're here, you're not here by accident. And there's a moment right now that maybe the creator of the universe wants a relationship with you. He wants you to know that you didn't just come here to a building, you came here to a group of people that follow a loving Savior. And that Savior's name is Jesus. And because God loved us so much, he came to this earth. He lived the life that I should have lived. He never did anything wrong. And the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for me, which means that he knew no sin and he took all of the sin, all of the shame, all of the filth, all of the perversion, all of the anger. He took that from me and he made it to where it was like he did it, not me. The Bible says that for he who knew no sin became sin for me so that I could become the righteousness of God. So he took my sin on himself and he gave me everything that was right about him. That's the gospel, friends. But in order to make that gospel a real thing in your life, you have to accept it. God's not going to force it on you. It's got to be a choice that you make. And in this moment, this moment has the opportunity to change the rest of your life. The next 10 minutes have the opportunity 
to change the rest of your eternity. Friend, you're not here by accident. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So what about it, friend? Would you, would you steward this moment? Would you say, Josh, yeah, I want to make that decision. The Bible says it takes faith. It takes faith in Jesus and an acceptance of his free gift. For those of us maybe in here that have said, Josh, I've made that decision. God says there's a right there's a, there, there's a right way to spend our time, and maybe there's a wrong way to spend our time. So when we think about how to spend our time, and we are busy, and there are a hundred things pulling at us, how do we have the wisdom to spend our time? I would tell you this. God has set a, God has set priorities in the scripture for your life. The very first thing you need to make time for. So what I would say is, take your calendar and erase all of it, everything, erase it all. So now you have 168 hours in your week available. Start with your time with God. That should be the most important time that you spend every single day. Whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, maybe it it, it fluctuates based on work schedules and all of those things. That should be the very first priority in our life because those that 30 minutes changes the other 1,410 minutes of our day. So why, if we're going to redeem the time, if we're going to make the most of our time, why would we not start there? God says to make sure, spend your time with me. Because when you spend time with me, I give you my power. And through that power, you have the power to impact your family, your coworkers teammates, your classmates. That is the very first value. The second thing is your family. I mean, we're talking about winning at home, and as we think about winning at home, the bottom line is this. We show our family what we value by how much time we spend with them. That is the harsh reality that I have to understand and that you do. We can say that we love them all we want, but the reality is, We tell them how much we love them by how much time we spend with them. And so maybe, again, you're you're sitting in here and you're like, Josh, I, I live alone. I don't have a family that lives with me. Reach out. Don't just spend time binging or 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 going off and doing flippant things. Reach out to people. Redeem the time. Build those relationships. Especially if you have a spouse in the room. If you live with a husband or a wife, friends, listen to me. This is the most earth, important earthly relationship that we have. The most important. Anytime God talks about his love for us, he talks about it in a way of marriage. Marriage is a covenant relationship, right? When you get married, they say what God has brought together, let no man break apart. This idea of a covenant is the, what God has with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's a covenant. It's a promise. How much time are you spending together? I had to call on Friday. I had to call a friend of mine who's a counselor, and I had to, I had to get a heart check on this. Because our life is so busy that, that sometimes I'm like, man, date nights aren't doing it anymore. Right? I spent two and a half hours, three hours with my wife on a date night, and, and we're just catching up. We're just trying to get, like, we're, we're a week behind in our communication. We get caught up, and then we have to go home again. No, no, no. Friends, maybe it's just investing in a marriage retreat. Maybe it's taking some money that you were going to do something else and say, you know what, let's, in, let's invest this into our marriage. It's the most important thing we have. Parents, I mentioned it earlier. We can be so focused, and I've done this. We can be so focused on the people outside of our home we forget the most important disciples we could ever make live with us. We're going to raise them. And if you're like me, you get tired and you're emotionally and mentally exhausted. 
don't grow weary. If it, was, if it was something that we could do in our own power, it would be easy, but it's not. You need God. You need the power of God in your life. You need a relationships with a community of people, a small group, a church. You need a pastor. You need a people who are going to tell you, it's okay. Keep going. Make the most of the time. And I would just include this because I think it's important for all of us to hear parents. Whether you're an adult or whether you're a kid in here, you need a good relationship with your parents. Now, I don't know every story. I don't know every story. But somebody told me at one point that when you get older, it doesn't neglect or you don't neglect that relationship. Jesus in the middle of a crucifixion. You go read the crucifixion story. Jesus is being crucified on a cross. And he looks down and he, he looks at Mary and he says, Mary, he says, he says, mother, behold your son. He points to John, the apostle John. And he says, John, behold your mother. In the moment, the most horrific moment in the life of Jesus, he took care of his mom. He wanted to make sure she was taken care of. Adults, when was the last time you really reached out to your parents? When was the last time you had a good talk? It's important. Teenagers, kids, college students, call your parents. Build that relationship. Don't neglect it. It is going to be the most important relationship you have moving forward. You're going to want their support. Build that now. I mentioned it earlier. If you're in here, maybe you're just saying, you know, I live alone, I have a job, or I'm going to college, or anything like that. Friends, listen to me. If you have extra time, you pray about how God wants you to use it. Pray about how God wants you to use it. Because when he says, make the most of your time, Right now, we're doing a series at Winning at Home, but maybe it's for some of you, you need to get more involved. Because the bottom line of it is, is the only thing that will last forever is the souls of man and God's word. So where should we be investing? In the things of God. Now, I'm not trying to guilt anybody. You probably, you know, so I don't want anybody out here thinking, well, he's a pastor, he's just trying to get us to serve more. That's not what I'm saying. I want you to read your Bible. I want you to pray, and I want you to ask God, where can I be making more of my time? Where can I be redeeming more of my time? And he's going to tell you, are we going to have the courage to say okay? Because, friends, as we wrap up this series in winning at home, I want you to understand that when we win here, we win everywhere else. Let me pray with you. As we think through this message, I, I, I closed with this, I, the idea of talking to anybody in here who may not have a relationship with God to make the most of this moment. I described to you the relationship is broken because of our sin, and because of that sin, we, we don't have a relationship with God. But the Bible says that Jesus gave us this free gift of, of salvation, and he took our sin upon himself. So that we can be right with God. And friend, is there anybody out there, is there anybody in the room that's saying, Josh, I want to accept that free gift? No one looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you just slip your hand up if that's you? Josh, I want, to just, I want to just proclaim that I want to accept that gift. Anybody in the room, you can slip your hand up, put it back down. Thank you. For the rest of us, friends, make the most of our time. Don't rush through the seasons. Don't rush through the days. Make the most of your time. Because as we think about time, can't have any more. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are humbled to know that you control time. 
and that we have the time you give us, the breath that you give us. And God, I pray that you would give us wisdom with how to redeem it, to help us not to waste time, not to waste the time we have in relationships, the time we have with you, the time we have at our church, the time we have serving. I pray that you would just give us wisdom as we think through all the demands and to put priorities in in our life. So Lord, we ask that you help us to obey what you've told us. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, uh, every week when we get to this point in the the message, we uh, just want to open up the front for you to come and to pray. Um, You can pray. We have um, Matt and uh, Corinne down here. And they'd love to pray with you. If you want to come and just pray uh, by yourself, then that's okay too. Uh, If you want to pray in your chair, that's all right too. Uh, But in this time, we want to invite you to seek the Lord, um, to worship with us through song, through prayer. Um, And just as we close the service out, would you lift your voice, um, (laughs) whether that's in prayer or in song, just join us in worship. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in every. Everything you've made, every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you Everything exists to lift you 
too high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sound of all our praises still falls shy. Chased down my heart through all of my failures and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear Well, you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave behind you, so will I I can see your heart and everything you've done Every part designed in a work of our calling. If you go surrender, so will I. I can see your heart in a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child that died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. You can be seated. Today, Josh reminded us of the importance of stewarding our time and how important that is. And another thing that we, if you're a follower of Jesus, are just really challenged to steward well is our finances. And that's why here at City Walk, we take some time out of our service and we worship God through our giving. And so if you call City Walk home, this is an opportunity for you to give not to but through City Walk to what God is doing in our area. If, if this is your first time or you're a guest, this is not a time for you. But for those of us that call City Walk to, uh, home, this is our opportunity to invest in the kingdom of God locally. And you can do that in one of two ways. You can do that online through our app or through uh, our website. Or in the very back, there's a table with some envelopes and a, an offering basket that you can put your offering in there. And it's because of your generosity that next Saturday, we are going to be at Greenwood Park from 3 to 5. And there is going to be hundreds and hundreds of people from our community. And we together are going to have an opportunity to serve and to just have a really good time at our pumpkin party. This is our fifth time that we're doing this. And so on your way out, if you haven't already, make sure you pick up some invite cards. Invite somebody to join you. Thank you for bringing in candy. We need 10,000 pieces, and I think we probably have about 5,000, probably have about half. So if you still want to bring candy in, we'll be here on Wednesday night. You can bring it by the church on Wednesday. Another thing that we're excited about this month is we, we enjoy having parties here at City Walk, and there's never a bigger party than when people go public with their faith through baptism. And at the end of the month, we have another opportunity before it gets too cold 
to have a baptism outside. And so if you're interested in going public with your faith, if you've never been baptized, you can sign up in the app or online. And we would love to connect with you and walk you through that process and then celebrate with you the last Sunday of this month. Before I let you go, I want to show you a quick video. We're starting a brand new series next week that I think is going to be very helpful. Take a look at the screen. So next week, we're going to start a new series, and it's going to be all about prayer. And prayer is one of those things that whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, you've probably attempted to pray. You probably don't understand prayer. It's maybe something you're like, man, I don't, I don't really know how this whole thing works. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about it next week and for the next few weeks because it was important to Jesus and so it's important to us. So I want to encourage you to invite somebody back. We're going to have a really good week next Sunday. But we, before then, we'll see you next Saturday at the Pumpkin Party. Pick up some invite cards, and we will see you next Saturday. Have a great week.